Hey everybody, it's Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and welcome back to the channel. So in this week's video, we're going to be doing some tests with Canon's newest mirrorless camera, the EOS R5. So this camera already has a lot of people talking, and I plan on doing a few videos on the EOS R5 that are gonna have more test footage and good stuff like that. But in this video, we're gonna get the easy stuff out of the way and test the ISO performance and exposure recovery of the EOS R5. So this is going to be a two-part test, and in the first part, I'm gonna be going through the entire ISO range of the camera from 100 to 50. 51,200 and talking about how the ISO affects that image all the way up that scale. And for the second part of the test, the exposure recovery, I'm going to stay at the camera's base ISO, then underexpose the image incrementally all the way up to five stops underexposed, then go up the other end of the scale to overexposure up to five stops, and then I'm going to see what I'm able to recover from those extremes in post. I included all of the shooting specs from both tests in the description below if you wanna check those out, but most importantly, I'll say that this entire test was shot in 4K and Canon Log. So let's start with the first test, ISO performance. So I'm going to show the ungraded image first and then wipe over a simple C-Log to Rec. 709 LUT so you can see the image in a more relevant color space. So 100 and 200 ISOs are completely fine, no increased noise whatsoever, and the image is looking generally very clean. 400 is perfectly fine, which makes sense because I'm pretty sure that's the native ISO for this camera. If not, I would guess that it's 800. Okay, 800 ISO, hardly any noticeable difference from 400 ISO, still a great clean looking image, but the noise did increase a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, 1600. Grain is starting to get a little larger and dance around a little bit more, but still, it's looking nice and clean overall, and you would only notice that grain if you were really, really zoomed in. Okay, so at 3200 ISO, the grain is just now starting to get a little wild, and this is where it may become noticeable when looking at the image as a whole, but still barely and only in the shadow areas. But after this point, we are starting to get into a little bit of a noisy zone. Okay, 6400 ISO. Now the noise is starting to dance around a lot, and pretty much every shadow value has some visible noise. At this noise level, I wouldn't expect the camera to render color in the shadow areas as well, but the mids and highlights still seem generally unaffected. Okay, 12,800. The noise is starting to get very wild and dancing around like crazy, and is becoming very noticeable in the image as a whole. There's a very pronounced green shift in the noise, and even some of the midtones are showing some visible noise as well. Okay, 25,600 ISO. Okay, so here the noise is officially out of control. It's moving around very wildly, and it's starting to get very chunky with bits of red, blue, and green chroma noise if you look carefully. But honestly, not that carefully. The noise is completely noticeable no matter where you look in the image, and it's even bleeding into some of the highlight areas, which is how you know it's bad. Okay, 51,200 ISO. So this is the max ISO for video in this camera. And here, the noise is so intense, the image is starting to get a minor flicker and massive waves and chunks of noise are starting to manifest on the image. This is because the camera is trying so hard to amplify the sensor to reach the correct exposure. And so the image is being completely taken over by noise. And it's particularly noticeable in these green and purple squares right here. Okay, that wraps up the first part of the test, ISO performance. And my main takeaway here is that the R5's ISO performance was pretty impressive, but still not quite up to par with some of its competitors. What I learned from doing this test is that personally, I wouldn't push the Canon EOS R5 past 6400 ISO unless I absolutely had to. Okay, now moving on to the second part of the test, exposure recovery. Okay, so one quick note about this. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I couldn't find what the native ISO in video is in the EOS R5 absolutely anywhere I looked. So I did this next part of the test in 400 ISO because to my understanding, that is the base ISO for Canon Log. So if you happen to know for a fact what the native ISO is in video, for the EOS R5, please let me know in the comments section because as far as I'm concerned, it's still unreleased information. So anyways, with that quick note out of the way, here's the exposure recovery test at ISO 400. Okay, moving on to exposure recovery. So here, I'm going to keep the correctly exposed image in the middle, the original test shot to the left, and on the right is that same test shot, but recovered in post. Okay, so at one stop underexposed, I was able to get this image back to normal with barely any loss in information, no big deal. 
Okay, so I had two stops under. I was able to get this image very close, but with a bit of compromise with the color information. And from here on, things quickly start to go south. Okay, so I had three stops underexposed. I was able to get this image back to a similar look, but now we're starting to see a lot of lost information, mainly in the shadows, which is pretty much unfixable. Okay, now that we're four stops underexposed, the image is completely taken over by noise. Good color fidelity is out the window at this point, and this image is looking pretty terrible. Okay, so at five stops underexposed, we are past the point of no return. We're starting to see some extremely intense noise that's causing green and magenta flares and flickers on the image, and all the values in this video were crushed so low to the bottom that I wasn't really able to recover that much at all. But it is kind of cool that I was able to recover it even this much, considering the original image on the left is basically pitch black. So underexposure recovery was pretty average. Now we're going up the other end of the scale to overexposure. Here's one stop overexposed, which the camera handled perfectly well with basically no loss in information whatsoever. Okay, two stops overexposed. Very similar story here. Pretty much everything was recoverable with hardly any loss of information. I just lost a tiny bit of latitude in the highlight areas, which you honestly won't even be able to see in this image. Even at three stops overexposed, I was able to pull basically all of that information back down and get pretty close to my correctly exposed shot. The only thing that's lost is the very upper end of the highlight values. But surely it starts to get bad after this, right? Nope. Now we're at four stops overexposed, and still, my only lost information is in the highlights. Otherwise, I was able to match my correct shot almost exactly, except for that mug right above me that got a little bit crushed. But it's kind of amazing if you consider how overexposed the original image is on the left. Now finally, at five stops overexposed, we have some irrecoverable information on my face, but most of the other values were generally unaffected. So at this level of manipulation, I had to really stretch the values out. So naturally, there was going to be some compromise in color. But again, if you consider the original image on the left, it's kind of amazing that I was able to get this close at all. So that wraps up the ISO performance and exposure recovery test of the EOS R5. And this is only the first of a few videos I plan on doing about this camera. So make sure you look out for those in the weeks to come. So if you want to try this camera out for yourself, you can rent the EOS R5 and a bunch of awesome RF mount lenses from our website, which I linked in the description below. And if you want to see any more tests of this camera, drop a comment in the comment section and we'll start a discussion about what you want to see tested in this camera. If you liked this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel so you can stay in the loop on more of our weekly content. And we'll see you in the next one.